is at different heights. So we have a, our sample here illustrated by this little cube. Um, we take a picture of it, and so we get a, a slice through the sample, which looks like this rectangle. We then step the focus. We physically move the sample up or down, down in this case. So we move the sample down away from the objective to get a second slice through a, a different portion of, of our little cube here. So we get a smaller rectangle. And we can keep doing this, um, getting slices through different parts of this object. And then we get, as I showed before, a stack of these images where we can now, in the computer, assemble these into a three-dimensional structure. And now we can look through that at different angles to generate a three-dimensional reconstruction of how this would look if it's viewed from different angles. Move that spot, right? It doesn't do us any good to just image a single spot in our sample. We want to have this grid of spots. And so to do that, we can change the angle of illumination as it enters the objective. And so see here, if we come in with light that's coming perpendicular to the uh, plane of the objective here, it comes to a focus exactly in the center of the field of view. If we now tilt that beam so it's coming in at an angle, we move the focal spot off axis, and so we can now record from the left side of this object. If we instead change the angle to the other orientation, we now record a spot from the right side of the sample. So by changing the angle of illumination as it enters the objective, we can move the illumination spot across the sample. Uh, you might be wondering now how we still detect the, or how we still block the out of focus light because now our, our spot will no longer necessarily be coincident with a pinhole, right? Before we had the pinhole drawn exactly on the center of this optical axis of our microscope, and now as we move the focal spot off axis, how do we make sure that that light still reaches the pinhole and goes through it and doesn't get blocked by the pinhole? So here's the optical path of the confocal microscope that allows us to do this scanning. And the heart of it is this set of scanning mirrors here, which allow us to rotate the angle at which the laser beam enters the objective and thereby move the spot across the field of view, across our sample. So if you follow this here, we have a laser that enters our microscope. It's scanned by these scanning mirrors here. That changes its angle so that once it's focused by the objective, the spot it illuminates in our sample changes. Now, if you imagine what's going on with the light that's emitted by that spot, it's going to come out, be collected by the objective, and it's going to come out at the same angle it entered because the objective maps angles into position. And so the light that comes from that emitted spot, that excited spot, is coming out at the same angle that the laser beam entered. And so if we don't move these mirrors, the, that emitted light will be reflected by these mirrors along exactly the same path that the laser came in along. And so that means that the light here is always coming in the same direction regardless of what spot it came from because the scanning mirrors exactly undo the angle change that we apply to the illumination light. They exactly undo that angle change on the emitted light. So then all we need is a dichroic mirror, this 45-degree this, um, mirror here, which separates that emitted light from the laser. And now we can pass that through our pinhole again, and it'll reach the detector um, regardless of where it came from on the sample. So by using the same pair of scanning mirrors twice, once to scan the illuminated light and a second time to de-scan the emitted light, we can keep our pinhole fixed because the emitted light will always come back along the same path regardless of where it came from in the sample. So that makes this construction really simple. We just have a single fixed pinhole. We put a detector behind it. And now we can see the emitted light regardless of where it came from in the sample.